Good afternoon YouTube, my name is Brandon and today we're going to be building what I'm calling the ultimate shop stool. Now for this project I knew that I wanted to incorporate a material that I've never used before and that is leather. So with that being said, let's get going. So here I've just got some 8th inch uh, metal plate and I'm just using this uh, piece of scrap steel as a straight edge. Nothing too fancy to get ready to cut it out with the plasma cutter. And I had to change the tip out, the tip uh, messed up on it. So now I'm just going to grind off that edge, get rid of all that slag that was on there. And I got some scrap uh, steel tube around the shop that I had, so I'm cutting that up. And that's going to be the reinforcing perimeter around that steel. I'm just grinding out, fish mouthing out the, the tube, doesn't have to be too perfect. And then that just slides together like that. Like I say, it doesn't have to be perfect, and I'm just using a magnet to tack it all together. And it's important that you don't weld everything out when you're doing stuff like this, because I'm kind of making this up in my head as I go, so I'm just tacking everything up, just because I don't want it too permanent. Not, not at first, anyway. So now that I got the basic shape together, I'm just going to go around and do some stitch welding. I'll do full welds on the hinge side and I'll do full welds on the seat side. And that's that's going to be the hinge and the side closest to you is going to be the seat. And that's the side I'm doing right now. Now I'm just laying out the center line for these holes. Uh, the only thing that these do is just, it's a decorative effect and I will tell you it was super hard. It took a lot of time to do. If you've got a real powerful drill press, this probably would work well in a drill press, uh, but it was brutal. It just took a long time. It wasn't that hard. I probably could have plasma cut them out, but I just wanted a really good round circle. So here's a testament to being uh, thrifty. <laughs> I'm making angle iron. That's all this is. I just had some flat bar laying around. I needed a piece of angle iron, so made my own. Now this cutout, you'll see here in a minute what that cutout actually does. That's going to be a tab that fits over that angle iron that I made with a pin going down through the center. And that's what these holes are for right here. Just using the washer trick to do radius edges. I don't show that, but you guys have seen me do that plenty. And now I'm just drilling out the holes in that angle bracket that I made. That's what's going to attach. So they're the tabs that we made. I shoved the rod through it. Now I'm just tacking the tabs to the L bracket. And now I'm going to finish weld them out. So now you'll notice here that I jump around. And the reason for that is if you just do one area and you don't let it cool, you'll create warping. So I'm trying to move around a little bit to help reduce the warping. Effect. Now we'll just stick that piece in, see how it fits, make sure everything lines up good. And it fits perfect as it should. So now what I'm doing is I'm welding a washer to that pivot pin that I had slid through the bracket and that's just going to that's gonna make up the completed assembly and that's all there is to that. And you can see that through the bracket in the background. And here I've taken one of the four inch holes, drilled four holes in it, and now I'm just welding a shaft to that and that's going to actually be the seat post. So I'm trying to reuse a lot of the stuff from the project. And now I'm just rounding the edges off a little bit. So this will be my first time ever uh, working with leather. So all that is just a paint stick. I just wanted to get some uh, consistent circles. So here's a little trick. You just drill a hole in, uh, in a paint stick. And that'll make your circumference. And then I just take a jigsaw and cut them out. Glue it up so I got a nice solid base. Uh, that's three quarter inch. I think it's probably CDX. I don't think it's AC plywood. Um, it's just rough plywood. I glued it up so now it's about an inch and a half thick. 
and I'm just going to now pre-drill my seat post where I want that to go and now I'm knocking off all the edges with a belt sander just so it doesn't tear into the uh, into the leather material and this is some two inch foam that I got at a local craft store uh, I didn't pay much for it. I think it was only a couple bucks you brought, guys could probably pick that up at a local um, at one of your local craft stores and I'm just using a little pocket knife to trim it out roughly and get rid of any uh, any rough ends it's not too uh, detrimental that it has to be perfect and now I'm just going through and I'm taking the it's bison leather and I'm just taking the bison leather and just kind of getting the knack for it like I say this is the first time I've ever done it um, it was an experience it definitely uh, is a lot harder than it looks to, to do a good job so I have a lot of respect uh, for people who actually do this for a living uh, and try to do a good job because it is pretty difficult but I'm um, for you know a newbie I'm really happy with how uh, how the finished project came out it took me a little while but uh, all in all it looks really good I think the biggest uh, lesson I learned in working with this is just take your time. Go nice and slow. Um, you know, be methodical about it. Don't go. Don't tack everything down until you be a positive that it's right where you want it. So now I'm making a, a ring that's going to go around the perimeter of that seat, um, and that's kind of again that's just more of a decorative element. Uh, I knew I wanted that on this uh, when I started. So I'm using the original paint stirrer that I used to make the circles and I'm just drawing a template on my work on my uh, work surface so I can continue to bend this and look down at my template and I don't have to actually slide it off and on over the top of the leather. I didn't I was a little nervous that if I kept doing that that I was gonna stain the leather or possibly damage it. So I, I drew it on the bench. Now I'm just hammering things out, uh, getting things a little bit smoother. And so now I just took the circumference and figured out that four inches would be approximately uh, about where I wanted a screw. And now I'm just welding, uh, welding it up. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then I just kind of like formed it. The one thing I was concerned about here though is I made sure to deburr the inside of the hole uh, because I could see that this could be a problem because this does fit so tight. So. Um, I was afraid that I was going to rip the leather and I was actually a little concerned whether or not this was going to fit once I was done. Uh, it did, thankfully, uh, so I guess you'd rather want to be on a little bit on the uh, looser side than the tight side. I was on the tight side here, uh, but it all worked out. So, And that's just an automotive trim screw. It's a black oxide finish. I had them laying around, so that's what I used. Uh, you don't have to use that type of uh, screw, but I kind of like how, uh, how the look came out. And you can pick those up at any automotive store. They're, they're an automotive uh, trim screw. And now I'm just going to put the uh, stem on for the seat. And get this whole thing uh, attached. And get it all together. And get it attached to the corner brace of the leg. And the great part about this workbench is that it can be used on both sides of the bench and it takes up virtually no floor space. I love it. And that's all there is to it. If this is something that you like, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I want to thank you guys for watching. I had a lot of fun doing this project and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it and maybe giving you a few ideas to build something of your own. So if this is something you like, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks guys. Have a great day. See ya.